Hey, what's going on everybody? I am Pastor J.D. White, the Senior Pastor of the Greater Olivet Baptist Church here in Detroit, Michigan. This is the city of faith and the place where faith wins. I wanna take this time to welcome you to the Life Broadcast where we believe that faith is just not a saying, but rather it is a lifestyle. I am of the opinion that we as believers in Christ, if we need anything, then what we need more of is faith in God. I want to encourage you. I want to let you know. I want to inform you. I want to announce to the world that not only will God do it, but God will do it for you. Do me a favor. Say to yourself, God will do it for me. Let's jump into the broadcast and I'll see you at the end. I want to read a little bit longer than usual. But... Uh... All that is going on requires us to do just that. The book of Matthew, chapter number 27. There you should find these words. KJ, like, where the key is at? Last one on the left. Just keep going down. KJ, like, yup. That's my exit right there. Beginning at verse number one, you'll find these words. When morning came, is that right? All the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. When they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, saying that he had been condemned, was remorseful brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders saying, I have sinned by betraying the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because they are the price of blood. They consulted together and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of him who was Christ, whom they of the children of Israel Christ and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. While he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast of the governor was accustomed to release it to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore when they had gathered together Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? He knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, he said, his wife said to him, saying, have nothing to do with that just man. I've suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. I had said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called to Christ? They all said to him, let him be crucified. Then the governor said, what, why, what evil has he done? And they cried out all the more, saying, let him be crucified. But Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. 
he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. You can't be something. We are we are continuing we are continuing in this installment or in this series uh, entitled Guilty Until Proven Innocent. May everybody say guilty, guilty. until proven innocent. Any of us has ever looked at court TV, ever seen any sort of a trial? <clears throat> Maybe you enjoy the shows like Law and Order and things of the sort. Maybe uh, you've gone to trial for a case of your own. Regardless of where you find yourself, Sister Brandy, we all would agree uh, that what becomes necessary in any trial is that of a defense attorney. Uh -huh. uh, in any trial, there is one who sits in the seat of the accuser, and then there is another that is uh, sitting in the seat of the one being accused. And uh, part of the reason this is not always an easy or a simple process, uh, Sister Stacy, is because the truth of the matter is that sometimes at the end of the day, the outcome is always left up to the people. That, that, that is, that is, that is really when we really think about it, a rough seat to be in. Think about, can, could, could, you, could you pause for a moment and think about how rough your life would be if your happiness was left up to the people? It could, 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 you, could, you, could you sit back and imagine how rough things in your life would be if, if, if the things that are taking place or that if the things that were to go on in your life were left up to the people? Uh, because the truth of the matter is that I'm sure many of us can attest to the fact that there are some people in our lives who don't like us. They don't want to see us win. They don't want to see us move ahead, go ahead. They don't want to see us on the come up and right there. We ought to lift our hands and say, God, thank you that my outcome is not left up to the people. I don't know about y'all, but Deacon Pitts, I'm so glad on today that my outcome, the things that I have and the things that God does in my life is not left up to the hands of the people. Maybe I'm in the wrong crowd. Maybe you have dotted every I and crossed every T. But do I got anybody under the sound of my voice that can say, Pastor, listen, you ain't by yourself because there are some people who have a tendency to hold things against you no matter how much time passes and you're like, man, listen, I'm not even that person anymore. But thanks be unto God that he will do what the old church said. He's a thought beyond looker. <laughs> he listen. <laughs> That's not good English, but do I got any faulty people uh, that can declare? Uh, I mean, I cuss a little bit. Uh, I thank God he looked beyond my faults. Uh, do I got anybody uh, that can declare I don't always get it right? Uh, but thanks be unto God that he does not count on my fault. The body church is left up to the people. That's a dangerous situation because not only uh, does is the verdict left up to the people, uh, the, the strength of the case is left up to the strength of your lawyer. All right. All right. Now, if you've ever called the court, you just look straight ahead, won't well, nobody know, won't well, nobody know. But if you've ever gone to court, the one thing, if you can avoid it, when they say you got a court-appointed attorney, you be like, no thank you. Let me, no, 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 no. Let me go, let me talk to my mama, my daddy, my aunt, 
aunts, uncles, let me talk to the hood. Let me get in contact with whoever because the last thing I want is a court-appointed attorney. Why? Because the idea is that the court-appointed attorney is there because they need a job, but they're really not there because they have a cause. And can I suggest to you all that the reason Sister Brandy, many of us, has failed in us defending the work of our God is because many of us arrive on Sunday morning simply because we feel like we have an obligation. We are at the end of the day court appointed Christians. We don't defend God because we have a cause. We defend God because we feel like there's an obligation. And can I suggest to you all today that you are failing God in your success as a defense attorney when you turn or when you defend him out of a place of obligation instead of a place of conviction. Do I got anybody that can declare the reason I praise God now, Stacey, it's not because I feel obligated. It's because I know first what he has done in my life. I don't defend him because I feel obligated. I defend him because I know he's real. I defend him because he walks with me. I defend him because he talks with me. I defend him because he tells me that I am his own. Here's what the writer said. And the time we When we only defend God out of a place of conviction or out of a place of obligation instead of a place of conviction. Because the idea is that when you got a quarter point of attorney, uh, when five o'clock comes, uh, they stop working on your case. Uh, because the job is over. Uh, but when you got a defense attorney that you done paid a whole lot of money for, it's 11, 12 o'clock at night. And they got a number you can call. And when you call, you expect for them to pick up. Here's why. Because you pay to have that type of service. And can I suggest to you all on the day that the reason many of us are failing is because we want all of this access to God that we, Woo! at the end of the day, don't pay for. No, 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 don't get me confused. I'm not talking about paying in money, but I'm saying you ain't going to pay in money. We don't pay in time. We don't pay in sacrifice. We don't pay in service. We don't pay in prayer. And, 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 and so here God is. And the world has no respect for our God or for our faith because we are bad defense attorneys. Oh, that's why Deacon Gerald, when the world began to mandate that there are those who have to uh, get the COVID shot, uh, those people who were still on the fence, and they were like, well, you know, listen, let me go, let me go and get uh, uh, a religious exemption. And, and when you got your religious exemption, uh, you went to your boss and they were like, uh, let me review. And the reason that they said let me review is because uh, for many of us, our places of employment was shocked that we were a part of a religious anything. And so when they were like, man, let, up, let me sit up here and review uh, our sister Saida, they're, 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 they're walking around here and they're saying, how in the world do you expect for me to respect a God that you don't even honor? You, you want me to respect a God that you don't even serve? You want me to respect a God that you don't even appreciate? Flag on the play. Because we've been working with you for 10 years, and this is the first time. And let me tell you, your, 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 your relationship with God ought not be a shock to those you see on a regular basis. 
tell somebody, don't let it be a shock. Don't let it be a shock. It ought not be a shock. Those that we are around on a regular basis, uh, because if it is, then you are a bad defense attorney. That is the word that we learned on last week called an apologist. Everybody say an apologist. It means to be a defender of, in this case, an apologist of the faith is one who knows how to defend the faith. And again, the reason of us, uh, the reason that many of us are not good apologists is because we will defend everything else except our faith. And can I tell you that you are not a good apologist if you if you are defending what you've never taken the time to learn. And so we are in trouble because many of us will try to talk God even though we've never taken the time to try to learn God. Uh, uh, how many of us have ever had a job? Uh, uh, show of hands. Let me see. If you've ever had a job, raise your hand. Raise your hand. All right. How many of us feel like we are good at our jobs? A uh, show of hands. Uh, some of us feels like we can do our job in our sleep. Uh, we, we, I'm saying we know it. We, uh, we know the signs. We, we sit up here and when a problem happens, we're like, listen, if this comes up, you can do this, that, and this. This ought to happen. And then when that happens, go on over here and do this, that, and the other. Here is why. Because we know our jobs. But the reason we are so good at our jobs is because we've taken the time, first of all, to learn the job. And then we spent time working the job. Because what good does it do you to learn it and not work it? And can I tell you that for those of us who've been in church for all of these years, but our lives are not reflective of the God in whom we say we represent, it is simply because you can learn the Bible, but not work the Bible. You can learn scripture, but not work scripture. And I don't know about y'all, but in this season of my life, I'm saying knowledge alone is not enough. I'm trying to learn it, and I'm trying to work it. I'm trying to work it, and I'm trying to learn it. Because I want to see it made manifest in my life. And so we hear. There are a couple points, and I promise I'm going to be done with you. There are a couple points that I want to lift from our text. Here Jesus is. He's already been betrayed by Judas. Uh -huh. But what the Bible says is 30 pieces of silver. Well, so they've already taken him into custody. Now, uh, for those of you who may or may not know the Bible, you understand that Jesus or Judas was Jesus' boy. All right. Jesus handpicked Judas. Uh -huh. uh, tell somebody betrayal doesn't always feel good. Betrayal doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. And that's what this is. Let me let me let me bring it on. Hold. Let me make it closer for you. I want you in your mind right now to think about a person who is extremely close to you. Think about that person. On you when you need them most. That, that's the situation where Jews, Jesus is in. Judas has betrayed him. And Judas so is so consumed with guilt that he goes back to them and he says, huh? Stacy, he says, huh, here's the money. I'm not gonna, I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through with this. Here's the money, here's the money. I made a mistake. Here, take the take the money back, take the 30 pieces of silver. Take it back. They look at him and they say, Now, what you want me to do with this? He, 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 in essence, they say, What you want us to do with it? Judas gives them back the money anyway. He leaves, he goes to hang himself, he commits suicide, and now the high priests are sitting around the table. They're looking at the money and they say, Listen, we can't take the money. Because the money is for the blood of an innocent man. Can I tell you, church, that sometimes those in your life who never want to see you on the come up will always try to crucify you, even when you ain't done nothing wrong. They will know you are innocent. They will know that you have not committed a crime, but they will still try to build the case against you. And that's the situation that Jesus is in. So, 
But I'm looking at this church. Last week we had our opening. Now uh, the court trial is going on. We are the defense attorneys. And here is the question that we have to answer. What is it that Jesus is actually guilty of? That's the, that's the question on the day. What, what is it that he is guilty of? There are three things I've discovered that Jesus is guilty of, and I'm going to highlight those things. Uh, the first thing that Jesus is guilty of, church, is that Jesus is guilty of proper personage. Everybody say proper personage. Uh, in other words, the first thing that Jesus is guilty of, Jesus is guilty of being who he said he always was. <laughs> Sometimes simply being who you are will get you in trouble. There are people who don't like you simply because you're nice. And you got to tell them, I'm not putting on. I'm really just a nice individual. People will not like you because you are simply being who you are. Jesus Church is guilty of proper person. Who does Jesus say that he is? Well, first thing that he does is he turns to him, first tells himself, he tells everybody, here's the truth, I am God. If you don't believe me, listen, you can check out John chapter 20, verses 28 and 29. Here's what the, here is what the story is. Thomas simply calls Jesus my Lord and my God. Listen, and here is what it is when Jesus acknowledges him as true. Jesus doesn't just say he's God, but he also says, listen, I am the Son of God. You don't Listen, when he asked the disciples, who is it that men say that I am? But Peter says, listen, thou art the Christ. He says unto Peter, listen, I know you right, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But this is the one in which I'm like, where I have discovered here is my church, that I am unable to believe in any other God in a time period. There are a whole lot of gods and a whole lot of religions. One thing that I know is that all religions believe that there is God, that God is real, that God does exist. And so if that be the case, then when you read everything, then that one God that everybody believes in only acknowledges one as his son, and that is Jesus. When he says, this is my son, and who I'm well pleased, that's I really can't get down with Muhammad uh, because God says uh, Jesus is my son. Uh, that's why I really can't get down with Buddha because uh, God said Jesus uh, is my son. Uh, that's why I really can't get down uh, with Islam uh, because God said Jesus uh, is my son. Uh, and not only is he my son, uh, but he's my son in whom I'm pleased. Christ guilty of proper personage. Uh -huh. He's also guilty of having proper presence. Oh. Uh, let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, I said all the time. Uh, here's the truth of the matter, church, and that is that at the end of the day, uh, God um, is a perfect gentleman. Everybody say perfect gentleman. Uh, uh, he's never going to do anything that you do not allow him to do. Here is why: because God has perfect. Uh, everywhere God shows up, Jesus shows up. Uh, he impacts and affects change. Uh, when the woman with the issue of blood needed to be healed, uh, uh, he was just walking by. Uh, uh, when Jairus uh, needed his daughter to be raised, uh, Jesus showed up. Uh, before it got too late for Lazarus, uh, Jesus was right there. Uh, when the widow woman was taking her only son to the grave, uh, Jesus was going by. All I'm trying to tell you, church, is that Jesus has proper presence. And when he shows up, the way in which things work pre arrival cannot remain post arrival. Do I got anybody under the sound of my voice that can declare there was one day I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore? Here was I was very deeply stained with him. But that was pre-arrival because post-arrival, I can declare that the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and 
hands on the walls. He lifted me. Now Satan, Satan, my come on, pray. Let's fly out of here. And I got myself a witness under the sound of my voice that's made up in their mind. I gotta ride with God because not only does he have proper presence, and not only does he have proper personage, but I have discovered that he I pray that you all have enjoyed this uh, episode of Living Your Faith Every Day. Uh, on the screen, you're going to be able to find all of our information, our giving information. You'll be able to find how to connect with us, and you can catch us each and every week at this exact same time. Every Sunday, 9.30 a.m., every Monday night, 7.30 p.m., we'll be right here, Living Our Faith. I'm Pastor J.D. White. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be blessed.